now take up the next structure in axial skeleton. We have discussed the skull part and in the skull part we have talked of cranial uh, bones. We have also seen auditory bones, facial bones and even hyoid. So the next structure that we are taking under axial skeleton is vertebral column. In case of human beings, the vertebral column is made up of 33 pieces. These pieces are known as vertebrae. So there are 33 vertebrae and they are divided according to the location or the part of the body. So these 33 are divided as cervical vertebrae, then thoracic vertebrae and this is according to the region. Cervical is the neck region and that is known as cervical region or neck region and the vertebrae in that region are known as cervical vertebrae. The chest region is known as the thoracic region and that is where the vertebrae which are here they are called thoracic vertebrae. Then lumbar region that is the belly region. Then sacral region that is the lower abdominal part and the last which is the tail part that is only the tailbone we know in human beings there is no structure called tail but there is a rudimentary piece which is known as tailbone so that is known as caudal part and the vertebrae in this region are called caudal vertebrae so, division of these vertebrae is on the basis of the parts of the body. Cervical region in human beings or basically in all mammals, there are seven cervical vertebrae. These seven vertebrae, we will take up these vertebrae in detail. But now let us first talk about the brief classification. So, thoracic region, there are 12 vertebrae. Lumbar region, there are Five. So there are five lumbar vertebrae. Sacral also has five. But these five have fused to form one. So we write five. We write it in bracket. But we will be counting it as one. Because they are fused. Similarly, the tail bone which we call the caudal vertebrae. They are four in number. They are also fused. And we count it as one. So when we count this number, we get the total of 26 pieces. So 33 vertebrae are fused to form 26 pieces. So question, how many vertebrae do we have? We have 33. And how many vertebral pieces do we have? We have 26. Because in case of last, that is sacral and quadral, there are 5 and 4, but they are fused to form one piece. Our vertebral column, if we have to explain it by a formula, then the formula is written as vertebral formula. And we write it as C for cervical, 7. T or TH for thoracic region, 12. L for lumbar region, 5. S for sacral region, again 5, but we put a bracket so that we are reminded that they are fused. And caudal, we write CO and 4 in the bracket. Again, to remind us that these 4 vertebrae are fused to form one piece. Our vertebral column, this is the formula by which we represent it. Our vertebral column is not a straight thing. It is approximately... 70 centimeters long, 70 centimeters, that is the approximate length and it has two forward curves and two backward curves. So we can write four, two and two, two are forward and two are backward curves. So before we uh, discuss all the vertebrae, let us see what exactly we mean by these curves. So in the neck region, there is a curve. This is the front side, that is our ventral side, the face side. 
So this is the front or ventral side of the body and this is the back or dorsal side of the body. Now when we see the vertebral column we find that it, is, it has these curves. So it is not a straight structure. There are two curves which are on the front side that is the forward curves. Let me write the region. This is neck region. This is thoracic region. This is the lumbar region and this is the sacral region. And as you can see from this line which I have drawn there are two curves which are forward that is the neck and the lumbar curve that is cervical and lumbar. They are known as cervical curve and lumbar curve. They are forward uh, curves that means they are the curvature or the concave side is towards the ventral side or the front side. So we have two forward curves and there are two where the curvature is on the back side. For example, the thoracic and the sacral. So there are two curves which are backward curves. So that our vertebral column has four curves. It is not a straight structure. And each a vertebra is a ring-like structure. So before we take up the special vertebrae of these regions, we will try to understand the structure of a typical vertebra. In humans, each vertebra is a ring-like structure. And we are talking about the typical one and then when we take the special categories that means area wise then we will see what variations they have. So a typical vertebra has a central canal. As we said a ring like structure that means there is a hollow space in the middle. So this is that hollow structure which is known as the vertebral foramen or the neural space. We will label these structures a little later but there is a cavity here and this is the cavity through which the spinal cord runs and as it is a bony structure it has a part which surrounds it. So this part is the bony part and inside is a space. We are drawing it as if we see the vertebra from the top. So we are showing a top view this is the ventral side and here is the dorsal side. That means this is the front and dorsal means the back side. On the ventral side and this bony part is known as the neural arch. So there is one arch which is on the ventral side and one arch which is on the dorsal side. On the ventral side this arch has an extension like this. So let us erase this part now and in this part there is a soft structure, soft in the sense made up of spongy bone. This part is known as the centrum and it is on the ventral side. Now we can make this bony part also. So this dotted area which I am showing this is all bony part and centrum is also bony but it is spongy bone and this inner cavity is as we said, it is the, new, uh, the vertebral foramen or neural canal. From the dorsal side, from the dorsal neural arch arises an extension and it is normally a pointed structure which is downwardly directed. That means on the back side it is coming out and then it is slightly lower. We will be able to understand this after we understand all the vertebrae and then we see these vertebrae using that model of the human skeleton. So this structure is known as neural spine. Neural spine is backwardly and downwardly directed. Back and down normally. This is the situation. So this is the ventral side. This is the dorsal side. Now on two sides that is on the lateral sides from the arch there are two extensions 
and these are known as the transverse processes. So these two structures which are moving laterally on both the sides, so this entire part is the bony part. And as we go through various kinds of vertebrae, we would see that there are some differences in various structures like neural spines, even transverse processes. They differ depending upon the area where the vertebra is. This is a typical vertebra. This is known as a transverse process. So there are two transverse processes, one on each lateral side. There is a bulgy part which is on the ventral side and this bulgy part in the middle has a slightly um, demarcated area which is known as the centrum. Centrum has spongy bone. But it is also bony part and on the dorsal side is present the neural spine. So now this is a typical vertebra when you see it from the top. When we see it from the top, these four things are visible to us. Ventral side, the centrum part, dorsal side, neural spine and on two sides, the transverse processes. Now if we see it from the side, that means suppose this is the spinal cord and these are the ring like vertebrae which are placed around this. So this is the spinal cord which is moving through this foramen. So this is how the vertebrae are placed. The upper vertebra fits on the lower vertebra. Now there are articulating facets. Facet means an area where the two vertebrae articulate with each other. So if we see it from the side, what is visible to us? This is the body part of the vertebra and these are the transverse processes which we see from the side. If, let me draw one more vertebra here. So say this is the other vertebra, the second one. It's transverse processes and how do they articulate with each other? The lower vertebra has a structure here like this and in the upper part. So there are these structures on the upper region and similarly it would have on the lower side also. These are actually this, if you can see this thumb like thing, it is slight uh, bulge like this. And the upper one would also have a structure which is going to fit on this. So the upper one would also have this kind of structure and they articulate with each other. So the part of the lower vertebra which we are talking about or in other words we say the upper facet of the of any vertebra is known as prezygapophysis so this would be called prezygapophysis whereas the lower articulating facet or area would be known as postzygapophysis So these are nothing but articulating facets so that the vertebrae can fit into each other. Now when we talk of these vertebrae, this is the area where there is an intervertebral disc and on this we have this disc which is placed which is a fibrous uh, tissue disc and it acts as a shock absorber. Whenever this disc moves from its position that condition is known as slip disc. So when we see the vertebra from top, we can see pre and post zygapophysis. So there would be a structure here, here, which is going to be like a structure coming out so that the upper vertebra can fit on this. So each typical vertebra would have a pair of pre zygapophysis and a pair of post zygapophysis. These structures are articulating facets for the vertebrae with each other so that they can fit on each other properly. And the intervertebral disc is placed on the centrum. In case of humans, the or we can say in, in mammals, the vertebra is amphiplatean. That means if we see it from the side, upper surface is flat and lower surface is also flat. 
So this is the type of vertebra that we see in case of human beings. There are certain more variations which we see in other animals. For example, we can say uh, procellus. Procellus is concave on the upper side and convex on the lower side. If we talk of amphicillus, then amphicillus means the curve on the upper side as well as the curve on the lower side. If we talk of opisthocillus, it is just reverse of procellus. That means the upper area surface is convex and the lower one is concave. And if we talk of acillus, the fourth category, acillus, that means it is convex on both the sides. So on both the sides, it, should, it would show the convex structure and we have amphiplatean that means upper surface is also flat and lower surface is also flat. So this is about typical vertebra. Now we would take up vertebrae of different regions and we will start with cervical vertebrae.